Look at that. Today is a special day. I hit 100 kilowatts into the grid. Oh, look at that. The fan's actually turned on for once without making that uh, beeping sound. Impressive. All right, down, down. I may be putting another one of these in and at uh, my father's place soon. I'll make a video of that if it ends up ends up happening. But today, that is going on the Jeep. See how far we get. Alrighty. So we have a nice bright day. We're in float charge. Batteries are full. Nice and sunny. And we have, I moved the 250 watt panel right here into the sun. And oh, the clouds are coming. Better hurry up and do this test. Okay, so I'm shutting the, the big battery bank off because they're hard to put a load on. So now they're off. Now it's just a little bit of batteries in here. I'm gonna put a load on it. We're gonna see what kind of uh, amp output. Right now we're putting like nothing. So, 100 amp. I'm gonna put a 100 amp load on the these few batteries. And they really dip. 11-ish volts. Look at that, 200. Oh, we went over for a bit. It cut out, look at that. And we have a warning. PV disconnect. Haha, it was at it was at 244 watts there for a second. <laughs> at least it's got some sort of uh how do you reset this thing? I have no idea what I'm doing here. I just have to disconnect and reconnect it. Anyways, let's do this again. I want to lower my battery voltage. There's not very many batteries in here. That's why it's dipping so low under 100 amps. Do this until it gets warm. It's starting to get warm. Battery voltage, okay. Now I'm gonna disconnect the PV. PV's disconnected. I'm gonna disconnect uh, the battery side. Let's try it again. Okay, so it's all connected. Now this is the panels facing the sun. This is a hundred percent what the panel can create. And if this goes too high again. I'm gonna disconnect it. Hopefully before something happens. So, her voltage, oh good, her voltage is high. It shouldn't go over now. It's already in float. Ah, oh, crap. Okay. Okay. Wow. It's only putting four amps into these batteries. Alrighty, I gotta figure out a way of coming up with a load. Came up with a way. To put a load, this is a solenoid from a starter. It actually has quite a bit uh, of power needs to turn that solenoid on. And we're gonna, it's only, only these few batteries are hooked up. So it'll bring the load down. We should be able to see some power being used. We're above 200 there for a second. Now disconnect. Now, let's look up here. I'll tell you what we're reading down here. We're at 200, 217, 217 watts, 14 amps going into the battery and it's still outputting. 14.2 amps on a 10 amp charge controller, 216 watts. All right. I really like this thing. This is awesome. That panel is facing the sun and everything. And it's working just fine. Very impressed with it. So pointing straight up in the air, not going to be a problem for this. So seeing as this can go 50% over for a short period of time, it could not do uh, uh, 244 watts. That's when it uh, disconnected the PV. That's the peak I saw in here. But it was doing uh, about 215. No problem. Uh, I'll just show you one more time. 
And here we go. Climbing 217. 217. So that's what it was. That's what it's hope putting. And uh, so if that's about, well, more like 40%, 40, 42%, something like that is about putting. So I wonder what these could actually go over. These could probably do at least 50 amps each for a while, if not more. I don't, I wouldn't do that for a long period of time, but uh, I'm sure they could do 45 amps anyways. Yes. So I decided to do this test instead of putting the solar panel on the Jeep today because I need hardware that I don't have, unfortunately. But next up, I'm connecting the 250 watt panel to the grid time inverter and see how much more power we can get today because it's getting closer to summertime. So we should be well over 800 watts here when I connect it. The fans kicked in. But I don't seem to be able to put out more than 800 watts. Well, that says 800. And this says 700. But I am charging a few things. I got a battery being charged here. Or a battery being charged there. So that's more like, I would say that's more like 730, 740 watts. I'm just saying 800. Fans are revving up. Because I started putting more power in. And we're looking at... It's a warmer day today. Quite a bit warmer. Ooh. The fans almost kicked full on for a second. You're starting to blow some... Uh... Oh, and that's it. Cut right off. And power still 803. Huh. Okay. So I guess that's probably that thing's limit, about 800 watts. I guess I'm going to have to get another one for the summertime. So I have this makeshift test set up here. Now I'm doing a stress test on this. Will this be able to withstand continuous use? And I have two 100 watt inverters connected to just the battery bank inside there. It's like, I don't know. 100, 200 amp hours, I'm not even sure. I have a 100 watt light bulb there. I have like a 15 watt light bulb there. And this is fluctuating like crazy. Right now a cloud just came. And when the clouds come, my voltage dips. This should be about a 13 amp low dish, something like that. Maybe 15, I'm not sure. Anyways, the clouds come and go, and then the sun comes back out. Playing 50 watts. Oh, cloud. And sun again. You can hear the fans speed up and down. It's pretty funny. But when the sun comes out, right back up to 14 volts. And I'm going to be monitoring uh, the temperature. Right now it is still cold. Very cold. Like not even warm at all. So I'm going to run this for a while and see uh, how it copes. Looks like it does have a overheat uh, safety. Which is nice. Um, but this, I am really liking these charge controllers because they can run more than they say they can, so that impresses me. 